Today I'm going to show you exactly how you can make money with surveying. Whether you just got your surveying license or you're looking to break into the industry, I'm going to show you the exact techniques and tools you need to use in order to start making money as a surveyor. Hey everyone, my name is Rami Tamimi. I'm a professional surveyor here in the state of Michigan and I've been a surveyor for over a decade working on projects that span from traditional land surveying all the way to advanced geodetic surveying. And I'm always here to show you everything you need to do from start to finish to become a successful surveyor. I'm going to break down the most profitable types of surveys that we do. I'm going to give you a clear understanding of the various tools that we use. And then you're going to want to wait until the end of the video because I'm going to break down exactly how to price your projects in order to maximize your profits. Now, the most popular type of survey for professional surveyors has got to be the boundary survey. Boundary survey allows us to establish property corners based off of the legal description of a piece of real estate. So if there's some kind of real estate transaction, happening or there's a conflict between neighbors surveyors are called out to establish property lines so that we know exactly where they are in real life so imagine you want to build a fence along your property line and you don't want to take any of the land of your neighbors or rather give them any of your land a smart homeowner would call a professional surveyor and have them issue them a certificate of survey showing them exactly the bounds of their property they can also show them the location of their house in relation to these property corners making sure that possibly the house is built on the right lot and with this certificate of survey, this can be used as legal evidence. So if there were ever any conflict between a homeowner and their neighbor, they can present this survey in court as evidence, and it will usually hold as primary evidence in a land dispute case. We usually use total stations or GNSS receivers to do boundary surveys, providing us with centimeter level accuracy. Another type of survey that has proven to be quite profitable are topographic surveys. Topographic surveys show the elevations and features of a property typically a pre-designed drawing that allows us to see the current conditions of a property. This is essential for civil engineering and architecture because they can't do their designs without knowing how the property features are. Are there any existing buildings? Are there any slopes, any ditches, any trees that need to be removed? What about utilities that are available on site? All of these are very critical for civil engineers and architects, and it's the responsibility of a surveyor to capture all of this information and present it in a topographic survey drawing. We typically use G GNSS receivers and total stations for this, but we also use drones in order to capture large amounts of data in a short amount of time. This has proven to be quite effective, especially in areas where it's difficult to capture data, like underneath trees or in areas with lots of traffic, like interstate highways. Now, one of the most lucrative types of surveys and one that I believe is a gateway into the industry is a control survey. Control surveys essentially utilize GNSS receivers or total stations in order to set control points in the ground. Many companies that collect data using remote sensing might hire a surveying firm to set control points for them before they fly or scan their project. In a situation like this, surveyors are able to set up a GNSS receiver and collect geodetic positions on various points across a large span of land. They're also able to use traversing with a total station if they're looking for some higher accuracy control points. Maybe it's for design work and they need to establish various control points along a site. Depending on the method that you use to establish these control points, a surveyor would then report the accuracy and method based off of the tools that they used. They would then project these points to a desired coordinate system from their client in order to satisfy their needs and move forward with their project. This is also very popular with drone surveying where companies that aren't as comfortable setting survey control might hire a survey company to set the ground control points for them, provide them with the proper state plane coordinates that that drone mapping company can use in order to geo-reference their data and provide provide high accuracy deliverables. Now the next survey I want to talk about is construction layout. While it's very demanding on the body and is quite expensive, construction layout is one of the most profitable types of surveys. After the design phases between the civil engineer and the architect are complete, the surveyor is required to go back out into the field in order to establish the positions of whether it's the buildings or the utilities along with their respective offsets on site. And so if the weather is freezing like it is now in Michigan or it's extremely hot and the sun is baking the surveyors in the field, somebody needs to set the stakes in the ground exactly where the civil engineer designed it. And that right there is what most of us surveyors 
did in our summer internships. We typically use total stations for this type of project because it really does require a high level of accuracy, sometimes within sub-centimeter levels of accuracy, which is why we depend on a total station to do that. A GNSS receiver just doesn't give us the level of accuracy we need, and it really does require a skilled surveyor in the field in order to do construction layout. Now, this is not a complete inclusive list. There are several other surveys that you can do, but the last one I want to talk about are as-built surveys. Once a construction project is complete and the buildings are built, the utilities are in the ground, and the sidewalks and driveways are put in, a surveyor is required to verify that everything was built to the designs. And while there's several steps in between construction layout and as-built, the as-built really ties up everything in the end. We check the XYZ coordinates of various features on site. We check that drainage is working, making sure there's no puddling or any kind of major defects on site. We ensure that the utilities are all running and that the building is built using the correct material and to the same specifications as the design plans. You can think of as-built surveys like topographic surveys, but a little less demanding. Think of it as a softer or lighter version with less intensity for accuracy and really you're just validating that everything is working and built correctly and not going to cause any problems in the future. Now you could really use any piece of equipment. You could use a total station. You could use a GNSS receiver. You can even use like an automatic level and a tape measure. I've done as-built drawings like this using very basic tools and just measuring to make sure that the buildings are the right size and that the elevations match the drawings. But if you want to get really fancy, you could definitely use a drone to do your as-built surveys using photogrammetry and taking imagery and creating an ortho image of the entire site is a great way to present the final product to your clients. It's good for marketing and good for repeat business. So definitely leverage new technology and help it expand on your surveying work. Now, if you're looking to expand your knowledge in surveying and you're looking for a community of motivated people to work with you, then I highly encourage you to check out thesurveyschool.com. Over at the survey school, we have the largest community of surveyors working to learn and expand their knowledge in our industry. We offer courses in the classroom, a community to ask questions and collaborate with other members, as well as live mastermind events that you can work directly with me on to help you improve your skills and expand on your business as you incorporate surveying as a service. We also offer certificates for our courses. So after you complete a course, you have a final exam that you can take. And upon passing that exam, you will be issued a certificate of completeness signed and sealed by a professional surveyor certifying that you have mastered the knowledge needed to pass this course. With over 100 students actively taking courses, meeting in the community, joining our live mastermind call every week, the survey school is the fastest growing survey community online. Check out the link down in the description or visit thesurveyschool.com and I look forward to seeing you inside of the community. So behind me here is the total station and this is the signature tool used for surveyors, hence our logo for the survey school. Now the total station is accepted in the surveying industry as being able to provide us the highest level of accuracy whenever we're collecting data. Now depending on how far away the object that you're measuring is, you can expect an accuracy level between one and five hundredths of a foot or between three millimeters and 15 millimeters. Now this level of accuracy is only achieved if the proper steps and parameters are taken and that whoever's operating the total station knows what they're doing and sets it up in the correct way way following the exact protocol needed in order to achieve the highest accuracy for data collection. The total station uses relative angles and distances from a reference point in order to map out features that it measures. This is great because it doesn't depend on anything other than the visual line of sight between the total station and the object that you're measuring. That means you can use it while it's raining, while it's snowing, or while you're in a wooded area because there's nothing that will interfere with the reading except if you were to block it and then you lose your line of sight. So as long as you have a visible line of sight to your object, you'll be just fine and capable of taking a measurement. Next up, we have GNSS receivers. GNSS stands for Global Navigation Satellite Systems. And these receivers are able to receive signals from satellites in order to find their position here on Earth. They use a process known as trilateration. And trilateration essentially uses the best combination of satellite constellations to estimate your position on Earth. Now, simply having a receiver on Earth with the satellite visibility will 
give you an accuracy of about three to five meters, which isn't very useful for any kind of survey applications, but could definitely be a starting point for a project or for validation reasons. It also might be good for remote sensing projects where accuracy may not be the biggest priority, but rather being able to visualize your position using just geodetic coordinates. Now, in order to get high accuracy survey data, we would need to use some kind of correction network or a control segment like a base station. This is a fixed receiver that doesn't move and provides us with all of the errors and anomalies that we would get from the satellites. And the base station would then send those corrections to our rover. Now the rover, which looks like this, is a GNSS receiver that's on a pole and is mobile and collecting data while we're in the field. So by connecting the base station to the rover, along with the satellite visibility, we are then able to calculate a solution for the rover, which gives us an accuracy reading of about three to five centimeters. GNSS receivers are widely used in the surveying industry because they provide a very easy and effective way to collect data without having to reference a benchmark and taking relative measurements like you would with a total station. They also don't have a line of sight that they need to worry about, so you could work anywhere and move around without having a fixed position, although you do need to have satellite visibility, so if the top of the receiver is blocked, maybe you're in the woods or you're in a cave, then your receiver will not work and you won't get centimeter level accuracy, in which case a total station would be a better solution. Now we also use other traditional surveying tools like a automatic level or a tape measure and all of these random accessories that you find in the back of our trucks, but we have geospatial tools that we also use in surveying. This can include terrestrial laser scanners, drones for photogrammetry and LIDAR scanning, and even using our smartphones for mapping. Using our camera and LiDAR sensor, we're able to do 3D mapping with our phones. And if you were to attach something like a GNSS receiver and have a setup like this, you can do high accuracy surveying using your smartphone. Now using all of these different surveying tools, you're able to provide your clients with valuable products that they will pay you for. Question is, how much should you charge? Look, depending on where you live in the world and how much the average cost of living is will heavily influence the amount that you can charge for your surveys. Surveyors that live in the West generally make a lot more money than surveyors that live in other parts of the world simply because our education requirements are a lot higher and the number of skilled and knowledgeable surveyors is so low. And that's why anyone that joins the surveying industry is guaranteed to have at least a good paying job, but at best a successful surveying business. And so here is how I run my surveying business anytime I have a project. For travel time, I typically charge between $100 and $125 an hour. Now, if I'm traveling outside of my hometown, then I generally will charge from my house to the airport or the job site, and then from the job site to the hotel, and then back to the site or whatever time I'm spent in a car traveling or in a plane flying. Next is field work. And again, depending on the type of field work I'm doing, I'm generally charging between $150 to $200 an hour. This includes me doing traditional survey work like boundaries or topos, or some of the more lucrative geodetic work like terrestrial laser scanning or drone mapping. When I'm back in the office, I generally charge between $125 to $175 an hour for processing data, developing drawings, and reviewing our accuracy for the site. Now, if someone asks for a lump sum price, I generally fall back on my experience to just kind of give them a ballpark price, but I always put provisions in my contracts that allow me to upcharge if I need to, providing something came up in the project that requires me to spend more time than I normally would have. I then add in any miscellaneous charges like hotel costs, flights, transportation, meals, anything that's not a direct cost to the work that I'm doing. And generally speaking, that is how I price my projects and provide my clients with high quality work while also making money as a surveyor. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.